Good morning. Welcome to St. David's Episcopal Church. I'm Jocelyn Hughes, the rector, and we are so glad you're here for this seventh Sunday of Easter. You can download the bulletin for our service today from our website. The link is in the chat. And as always, the words, the hymns, and the prayers will be on your screen. So please pray and sing along from home as you feel comfortable doing. Coffee Hour will immediately follow the service on Zoom, so please log on there for a time of fellowship. Next week, we will be beginning in-person worship for Pentecost, May 23rd at 9.30 a.m. From that Sunday on, you will have the option to attend worship in person or continue to watch the live stream here on Facebook or any time after it airs. This officially marks our transition into being a hybrid church where we will have in-person worship and programming as well as online um, opportunities. So please continue to participate in St. David's community, however is best and most comfortable for you. Our ministries at St. David's continue and we're so grateful for your support through your prayers and your pledges. You can now give to our church through your mobile device. Just text SDC or St. David's Church SDC to 73256 and follow the instructions. You will never receive unsolicited texts from our church. Thank you for being here today. And now let us begin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, is the scepter, is the throne. Alleluia is the triumph, is the victory alone. Hark the songs of peaceful Zion thunder like a mighty flood. Jesus out of every nation hath redeemed us by Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. God's Paschal Lamb is sacrificed for us. Therefore, with joy, we keep the Easter feast. Forsaking sin, we share the bread of truth. Now Christ 
shalt die again. Death has no more dominion over him. Through him we die to sin and live to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. In Christ we see the first fruits of the dead. Though Adam's sin had doomed all flesh to die, in Christ's new Alleluia! The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia! Let us say together Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons. And he said, friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us among all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed to Joseph called Barsabbas who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas turned to what side to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias and he was added to the 11 apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, Jesus. 
us Christ with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus prayed for his disciples. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that, they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave, you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I did, do not belong to the world. Satisfy them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I sanctify myself 
so that they may also be sanctified in truth. The word of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my God. Americans have traditionally been thought of as a positive, hopeful people. Perhaps the most positive, hopeful people on earth. Anthony Jay, in his book Management, tells an interesting story about a British friend of his who was on a trip to America when, lo and behold, in the lounge at the airport, a stranger comes up to him and ruptures up to him and says, are you from England? And the stranger asks, and he says, yes, I am. Well, where are you from? Well, I'm from Cobham. How marvelous, said the stranger. I need to li I used to live on Epsom Downs, loveliest place in the world. But presumably, you have a better place here that you like? His friend asked. No, he says, I loathe this place, replied the stranger. Then your wife must like it. No, she hates it more than I do, <laughs> said to the stranger. Then surely you're earning a lot more money than you used to, asked the friend. The heck I am. I'm working harder and earning less, said the stranger. Well, why are you going to stay here? asked his friend. Why not come back with us? I'll tell you why, answered the stranger, because I get a feeling here that something's going to happen. And then he puts his hand behind his head and he goes, something good is going to happen, like it might happen tomorrow. I'm going to hit the jackpot. I haven't hit a jackpot in I don't know how many years, but I still, still feel like I'm going to do it maybe tomorrow. And it's a feeling that you'd never get in Britain. That's why I'm not coming back to Britain. Britain. But this man, American representative here, said it's because of opportunity. This is why I want to come and stay here. We call the Americans American dreamers. It's the dream of a better life. And historically, it has kept the people of the U.S. hopeful, positive, and loving. Even a terrible depression and two world wars have not dampened the American optimism. Our music and our motion pictures have reinforced this positive attitude. And a British sailor recalls that after World War II it ended, Allied servicemen and women were returning back home by the hundreds of thousands to Europe. He was about to be discharged from the Royal Navy. He decided to enjoy an evening out and bought a play for a, from one of the theaters in London. It was an opening night and he'd come to the American musical. He didn't know what musical it was or what the show was all about, but he wanted to celebrate the fact that he had lived through a world war and soon he would be going home. The first thing he noticed, however, was at the theater, it was so bright he had to almost wink because the light, bright lights hurt his eyes. For years, he and his companions in battle had to get used to muted lighting, something not, not all of them had ever in, have, had experienced before. Now the world was suddenly bright again, he said, and the mood he also felt was festive and electric. But nothing prepared for him what happened when the curtain finally rose. The stage blazed with a light so light he didn't know where he was. He seemed he was in front of the sun. But there were dancers and actors positively leaping upon the stage. The music joined them. The opening words transformed everyone. They went like this. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. The corn is as high as an elephant's eye, and it looks like it's climbing clear up to the sky. Many of you know the rest of that song. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a wonderful feeling 
everything's going my way. Oklahoma was the name of the musical, and it brought back a sudden blaze of energy, hope, and feeling of a possibility of a decimated Europe and for American himself. The musical, musicals of the 40s and 50s, particularly those of Roger and Ebenstein, are uniquely American phenomenons. Europeans made fun of this, though, and they called it the Pollyanna enthusiasm that the produced by the Americans, that everything, every time, had a happy ending. But that was our tradition, hope, optimism, and, t and energy for the future. And that was our future and heritage. So to you, do you sense what I'm trying to say today, this morning, that we all are having a hopeful glow now that <coughs> a new, a, one end of a season, liturgical year is ending and we're beginning another? <coughs> Perhaps the recovery from the recession and people from hopeless despair has caused us a little more anger these days, a little more dogmatic spirit, or is it just my imagination? Even though we are still in a very affluent people with strong corporations and a military second to none, world-class schools and hospitals and standards of living that is still the envy of the world, many of our people have reached the conclusion that we have lost our way that the days ahead will not be as bright as our former days. And the prophet Isaiah lived in a time when the people that were nearly lost all hope, but they had a good reason. Many of Israel's best and brightest were slowly returning from living in slavery in Babylon. The city of Jerusalem and its temple lay at the ruins. The once proud empire of David and Solomon was now a small colony on the fringe of the Persian Empire. Doom and gloom were everywhere. When suddenly Isaiah sounds out sort of singing like Rogers and Hemestein songs. They boast out like saying, things are going to change. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the whole, all the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears upon you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Light up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the arm. And then you will look and be radiant, and your heart will throb and swell up like the joy. It is appropriate that in the darkest time of the year, we celebrate Easter, celebrate Epiphany, and what we have gone through in our crisis with the virus, we have gone through that as well. Now let's call that a very dark time of our living. I believe it's particularly significant that Isaiah promised and says, Lift up your eyes, because there is an interesting relationship between downcast eyes and depression. People who are feeling downpressed with that emotion by continually looking down. Conversely, it makes sense that you can make yourself feel better by intentionally seeking to look up. At this dark, gloomy time of the year, you can do it yourself, a favor by lifting up your eyes. And the psalmist wrote, and I quote, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Psalm 121. So why should we lift up our eyes today? Let's begin here. You may think you are forgotten. You are not. This was Isaiah's message to his people. They thought God had forsaken them. And here is the real news. When you look depressed and feeble, you don't feel good. But you know that somebody, but you wish that somebody was watching you. Well, we can say for 
definitely sure you may think you have been forgotten. You may now may rethink on your own, but you may really say, say, who has helped you? Who will see you through this except God Almighty? A dad tells about his four-year-old daughter on their first trip to Disneyland recently. She couldn't wait to get on that Mr. Toad's wild ride. As the car zoomed through the crazy rooms and the path of speeding train through the walls that fell away, of course, at the last second, the tiny girl clutched the little steering wheel she held in front of her. When the ride was over, the girl turned to her dad and said, sort of shakingly, Dad, next time you drive. I don't know where I was going. <laughs> she didn't realize that she really didn't know where she was going and she was out of control, but the whole thing was in control. I'm not sure that you and I have that much control over our lives either. Life happens. Sometimes we feel that we are forgotten. Sometimes it feels like we are not on our own. Sometimes it seems like it will not make, we will not make it. But friends, here's the good news. We are not in control. A living God is in control, and life shall not defeat us. Isaiah says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Light up your eyes and look about you. Then you will look and be radiant, and your heart will throb and swell like with the joy. So again, remember, oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a wonderful feeling. Everything's going to go our way. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission, that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, give 
give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. He is the King of creation. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Spread the good news o'er all the earth. Jesus has died and has risen. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Come let us praise the living God. Joyfully sing to our Savior. Alleluia, alleluia, to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. The Prayers of the People, Form 3. Father, we pray for your Holy Catholic Church. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Korea. In our diocese, we pray for the clergy and people of St. Philip the Apostle, Lemon Grove. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, and all all priests, especially Jocelyn, our priest, and Wayne, Jim, and Kate, and for all deacons, especially Nancy and Phil. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all those who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Let us pray for an end to the pandemic of the coronavirus. Comfort those afflicted with COVID-19 and uphold our medical workers. Give a sense of responsibility for one another and guard, guide our leaders to so that the vaccine will be justly and swiftly distributed here and throughout the world. Let us pray for healing from the pandemic of racial injustice. Guide our civil discourse, O oh God. Alert us to social evil, evils and show our nation how to end patterns of racism. Let us now offer our own petitions and thanksgivings, especially for those on our church prayer list found in the back of the bulletin. We praise for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Please add to your own peti petitions, either silently or loud. Amen. Oh Lord, our God. 
Accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. The King of love, my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. Where streams of Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>